Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petrito, and today I'm gonna to show you a quick and dirty way of making a box joint jig. Check it. So with this jig that we're about to make, you can either use a single blade or you can use a dado stack. And in this example, I'm just going to use the single blade. The blade that I am using is a box joint blade, which means it leaves a flat bottom. If you use a combination blade, it doesn't leave a flat bottom. This is meant to be used with your existing table saw sled, or in my case, I have a miter gauge with a fence screwed onto it. I have my blade set to about three quarters of an inch high. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a curve into a piece of plywood, and then we're going to use that curve to measure and make our pin. So the next thing we need to do is cut a piece of wood that will fit into the curve that we just cut. I have a piece of hickory here, and I'm just going to slide over my fence to about one eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna test the fit. This might take a couple tries. Too loose, we'll try again. So it took a couple tries, but this one fits in there perfect. So we're just gonna cut a little piece off of there and then glue it in with some CA glue, making sure it's not sticking out the back. So now that that pin is glued in, we're gonna take that cutoff that we just made and we're gonna use that as a spacer. So I'm going to set this up against my, my fence and then set the spacer between the blade and the pin and then push that over until it just kisses. And then I will clamp this down and that is our jig. So before we make our first test cut, I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper and round over the edges of this, and that'll make it easier for me to slip on and off our pieces. So now I have a couple pieces of scrap and we're gonna make our first test cuts. I'm gonna run this through. If it's too tight or too loose, we can make adjustments by moving the fence. There is our joint. That is a little bit too tight because once we get glue on there, that'll be really hard to put together. If it's too loose, you move the pin away from the blade. And if it's too tight, you move the pin towards the blade. And you only wanna move it about the width of a business card. My joint is a little too tight, which means I need to make my pins smaller, which means I need to move my pin towards the blade. Is I'm gonna take a block and I'm going to clamp it on here. Put it up against my fence. I will loosen these guys so I can move this over. Stick a business card in there. Tighten this back up and try again on another test piece. That is much better fit. So now if you want to, you can screw this on to the backing board and you can remove the clamps because you have a nice fit. I think I'm just gonna leave the clamps on and use it this way. I have my four pieces for a box that I'm going to make. I've already got the groove cut in the bottom for the bottom piece. You want to mark the top of each piece so you don't get confused. And that mark that you put on there always faces towards the pin. So when we start this, I have the mark facing towards the pin. I'm gonna make a series of cuts that I need to do the other side. So I'll flip it over, making sure that mark is always facing towards the pin. And then when I go to cut my short side, I will flip this over this way and use that as a guide, making sure that mark faces towards the pin. And on this piece, the mark is facing towards the pin and I will cut through and I only need this piece to guide that first cut. And then you need to make sure your blade height is just above the thickness of your piece. I'm gonna do my two long pieces first, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this piece. So now, I'm going to flip this over this way. The marks are facing inwards towards the pin. I'm gonna use that as a guide.
The problem with using only a single blade is you have more fingers and you're gonna have a little bit more problems with the glue up. I'm actually going to do a second version of this where I use the dado stack and make either a quarter inch or a half inch finger and that's a lot less cutting and the joints will go together a lot easier. But I wanted to give you the option if you don't have a dado stack and you just have a single blade, you could do it that way. We would add a little bit of glue to that. The fingers stick out a little bit, but we can just sand that flush. And that is how you use the jig. Feel comfortable with your fingers that close to the blade. You can clamp it down between every cut. Like woodworking is all about safety and what you feel comfortable with. So now I'm gonna make another one with bigger fingers using the exact same process. So now I always have two jigs ready to go, one for an eighth of an inch and one for a quarter inch finger joints. And now if I just screw this into the back here, as long as I keep this fence, I can always put it back in the same position because those screw holes will line up. So that is it. I hope you found this useful. There are a few choices when it comes to making finger joints. You can use a single blade that gives you a lot more fingers, sometimes a little harder to work with, but saves you money from buying a dado stack. But the dado stack is definitely worth it. And if you want complete adjustability, you can get a super fancy jig like this. And that allows you to make finger joints at any size. So I'm going to put this jig into use in the next project. We'll see you in a few days. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.